next stage. Uh, so can I ask, so you've been studying mTOR, right? And so you, you understand how it works inside the body probably better than anyone else. Uh, so does, how has that impacted your lifestyle? I mean, what do, do you eat? Sure. Intermittent fasting and diet and... Yeah, you know, I, I try to do some of the things I've alluded to uh, before, and I, and I manage to do them more or less successfully depending on you know, the state of many other things going on. For example, during this pandemic, it has been much harder to do some of these things because we, we need other distractions and other things to sort of keep us mentally okay. But I do try to, for example, skip breakfast as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And I mean, have coffee and therefore have some period of a prolonged fast. I don't typically make it to the 18 hour period, right? Maybe if I eat early by seven or so, and then I have you know, lunch by noon or 1230, that's usually the best I can do. I, I just get too hungry. Uh, and I, because I'm an early riser, I think it makes, you know, the more time you sleep, it makes it easier to then sort of fast until, until 1, 130. But if you get up like I do early, it, it makes it harder. So I do that. I also very much try to avoid simple carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to find me drinking a soda or, or eating a cookie. Um, I, I very much sort of pick the desserts I like and have to just have those. For example, I love ice cream. Like ice cream for me is, is there, there's no other dessert that even comes close to ice cream. So I, I reserve my carbohydrates for ice cream. Um, so I do that. I'm far less good about doing lower amino acids um, in, in, in general. My, my family comes from Argentina. Argentina is big on beef. So I grew up eating, you know, a lot of steak and, and uh, good steak. And so I find that much harder. Although as I get older, I'm trying to do, I think there's lots of reasons to avoid sort of red meat. Um, so I, I try to avoid it as much as possible, but, but not as successfully as I, as I avoid, you know, high carb, simple carb foods. Right. Okay. And I try to exercise. As well. and, I, and I do think, you know, that, an important question in this entire field of longevity and interventions that promote longevity is for people who, you know, eat good diets, such as the ones we're talking about, who do some form of fasting, who do some exercise and exercise has an impact on mTORC1 in very complicated ways, right? That, that we don't really fully understand, I would say. Um, it, it clearly modulates it. Um, for people who do all that, will the addition of a rapamycin-like molecule do anything more for you, right? Um, you know, the, the studies done in mice with rapamycin, these are mice in a cage. You know, it's kind of depressing, right? There's not much to do for those animals. And so um, will, I, I would imagine rapamycin will help people with quite a sedentary lifespan. Will it help people that already try to do good things for their, for their health? I don't know, it's unclear. Right. Yes, no, I, I have thought about that. Um, and it, I mean, it's kind of a, a tangent, but I, I know that talked to Peter Akia and I was listening to him kind of recently and he said he stopped um, metformin. He said, well, you know, maybe it works differently on healthy people than it does on you know, unhealthy people. Because unhealthy people, it's definitely been shown to extend their lifespan. But he, he was uh, on his market. Uh, I think it's been shown in, in people with, you know, it's been, people who are metformin or not with cancer. I think you're right. It's been shown to have anti, it, it to prolong, it's supposed to have anti-cancer effects in large epidemiological studies. I'm not sure it's been shown to prolong lifespan itself. Oh, ah, uh, yeah. So no, maybe not your yeah, lifespan. The, the thing I was thinking was there was a study, I believe it was in the UK on diabetics who were taking metformin and in the end, the diabetic- but that was around yeah, right. that's around cancer, though. Yeah, they, they live longer. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, that was a very nice study. Yeah, so it, it's interesting, I, and potentially rapamycin is going to be the same kind of thing. That it, it 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 doesn't it doesn't help you if you're already. Well, that's doing why this study that that Matt Caberline is doing in dogs, right, where he is feeding dogs, he's giving rapamycin chat, you know, dog food with and without rapamycin to dogs that are free living, multiple different breeds, multiple different environments, lifestyles. 
that's a very important study, I think, because it's going to be an organism living in conditions as close as possible to ours. And of, you know, varied genetic backgrounds and, and ages and, you know, again, lifestyles. And so let's see, right? If, if that study shows rapamycin has an interesting effect on lifespan, it'll be very important. Right. So uh, can I ask you like uh, one last question? So is there a uh, one habit that you have that you for that you haven't discussed already, or, or maybe you have for for extending your your health span that you find works for you, right? I mean, because we discussed that some things like it's difficult, but something that works for you. You know, for me, the very simplest one that works. You know, and, and what's the bioassay? Well, I feel better. I feel more energetic. I lose weight. Um, is the low carb diet. Right. It's just a, such a simple thing. Avoid things that you know have a lot of simple carbs. Right. So cookies. And then there are things I like, right? Like pasta, right? Some that, are, you know, rice, potatoes, bread. I've never been someone. There are some people that, you know, can't imagine living without those. Um, so I, I, I try to cut those out as much as possible and, and have them relatively rarely. So I, I think a key in all of this is simplicity. If you can't tell people something that they can implement every day without thinking, nothing works. Talk to, I mean, you've, I'm sure you've talked to people who've done caloric restriction. Very, very hard, right? People don't love it and it's hard. It's mentally taxing. So you have to have people do things that they can incorporate into their everyday life in a simple way. And yeah, that's true for me. It's, it's, it's I need simplicity and because, you know, we have a lot of stuff going on in our lives right? to, yeah. to add this to it. Yes, yeah, it's, yeah. I, Cal, I'm, uh, I'm with you. Like intermittent fasting is so much better than calorie restriction. I just hope it's as effective. Okay, so uh, yeah, none Dr. of us want to know the answer to that for a long time, right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Dr. Sabatini, thank you so much for spending your time with us today. Um, and uh, so, and sharing your insight. So, can you tell people where they can? find out more about you uh, and your, your work? Sure. I mean, it's pretty simple. I think if you Google me and, and I, so I work at the Whitehead Institute, which has an affiliation with MIT. Um, and I'm also a professor of biology at MIT. I'm pretty easy to find. So I have a website. Um, I, I wrote a number of years ago when, I, when um, as part of the National Academy sort of introductory, they allow you to write a, a piece. I wrote a, a little kind of review almost remembrance of the mTOR field that, that is pretty easy to find in, in this journal called PNAS, Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. That, that gives a little bit of my background. Um, so, uh, but I'm, I'm pretty easy to find for better or for worse online. Right, yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I read that. It, it was great to get that kind of, uh, that backgrounder on, um, on mTOR. And you also have some, uh, some lectures, three, three lectures that you did on mTOR. Oh, that's right. On uh, iBio, iBiology, there um, one one in particular sort of an introduction to the mTOR pathway and growth control, which which I, I I have a very hard time watching myself, so I really not would fully watch those, but uh, I told the people like them. Yes, they are excellent. So we will link to all of those in the notes. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.